Thanks for listening to this teaching from City of Life Church. Check out www.col.tv for more great teachings, service times, and information on upcoming events. Now, let's join the service already in progress. I love you guys. You guys are special and precious and uh, appreciate you. Welcome to our summer playlist. Uh, This is uh, something fun that we do in the summertime where we take songs that are not necessarily church songs, Christian songs, just popular songs that we know. We like to sing them, have fun in church and use them as a jumping off point to maybe talk about some cool idea. So today, my message that I'm going to get into in just a moment is actually called Vivir Mi Vida Con Excelencia. Okay, I am going to live my life with excellence. So if I'm going to live my life, it's not just going to be just to sing and dance and to have fun and forget about the tears, forget about the rain. Yeah, I I understand there's a philosophy there, but As a Christian, as a believer, if I'm going to live my life, number one, I want to do it through the lens of who Jesus is. I want to make sure that I enjoy my life, but I want to make sure that I'm always living up to the standard of excellence that God has called me to. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in a minute. Before I do that, I just want to share a couple quick things. Number one, uh, Jude already thanked everyone. We thanked everyone a couple times about our kids' conference yesterday. But guys, it was truly world-class excellence at this conference. Uh, While we've got a generation that's trying to be, uh, you know, confused and hurt and broken, uh, I see the Holy Spirit ministering to a young generation of uh, 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 that is full of destiny and purpose and hope. So, thank you so much to our team, to our loving, caring leaders that work so hard to make this just wonderful. It's one of the greatest conferences I've been to. The excellence was a 10 out of 10. Uh, It was just absolutely incredible. I was so proud. Also, Soul Fire that's coming up on August 14th. It is $250 a student. And I think that sometimes when people say, well, that's too expensive, I can't do it. I think sometimes when we say something is too expensive, what we mean is it's too expensive to keep doing all the things that I currently do and do it. But there's some things that are worth sacrifice. There's some things that are saying, hey, I don't have to get every new pair of shoes. I don't have to get every video game. I don't have to go on all these extravagant things. I'm, I'm, it's worth carving out space to hear testimonies like Jude gave. You know, when I was uh, in the eighth grade, I was struggling a lot when I first came to this church. I was struggling a lot with my behaviors and I'd kind of gotten with the wrong crowd. And my parents paid for me to go to a youth camp at Lake Swan, the place that these kids are going. That's where I went in 1986, where the power of the Holy Spirit just came upon me in a way that was totally unimaginable. My life has never been the same. And I know this is gonna happen for teenagers. So first of all, I wanna talk to you. If you're a teenager and you're here in this room today, you need to be all over your parents saying, I am gonna go to this event. Guys, I'm talking to you. Guys, get your life changed. Young men, get your life changed and transform, radically transform at this event. God's raising up young men that are gonna be leaders of an incredible new generation. Make your spot right now. Get ready to be there. It's gonna be phenomenal. Uh, And also, we got Blink coming up. Uh, It's gonna be incredible in the fall. I'm looking for uh, to connect with people who wanna use your gifts for Jesus, whether you're a filmmaker, uh, you're into Uh, music, um, costume design, makeup, you you wanna be a part of a film crew, we go out and make like six or seven uh, little short films that are phenomenal. Everything from horror, comedy, drama, real film crews that go to locations all over. We film for months getting this thing together. It's a high, it's the highest level of excellence that of anything that we've done to this point. So it's gonna be really, really an incredible experience and we'll see souls and people coming to Jesus uh, in the fall. It's gonna be totally incredible. So uh, I'm excited about everything that's coming up. I've got a poem that I'm gonna read you today. And when I did this song, I could not help but think of uh, my unbelievable friend, Sammy, uh, who, who passed away you know, several months ago. And I think of his, his family and Sammy was such a huge part of my life and he would have been really proud of me. Uh, Sammy would have been very proud of me from my Spanish right there, Nancy. I know that he's looking down right now and very happy with me. So I wrote a poem for him. Uh, and I'm gonna share this poem. It's a poem that's, uh, it really doesn't have anything to do with my message. Just sometimes I like to share maybe a, a poem or something from the stage. It's kind of a little different, just kind of for the sake of art and just expression. But this is a poem I wrote for Sammy. It's called, I Never Needed To. And it says this, I never put my guard up with you. I never needed to. Eye to eye, different language, vanquish the Cambridge, break into Spanglish. Heart level friends don't need to be vetted. Hermanos and warriors, I'll never forget it. I'm sorry we missed Puerto Rico. I'm not sorry that I tried Coquito. (laughs) 
but I'm grateful to be able to honor the faithful way you lived, your goodwill you gave as a gift. Now I want to lift others the way you did. Our message today is found uh, from Isaiah 60. That's our text. This text is about shining. This text is about having something in you that is better than average. And I want to tell you before I get into this message today, God has called you to live a life of excellence. He's called you to live above what is expected. Uh, you have more in you than you can imagine. I want you to look at the person next to you and say, I am so lucky I got to sit next to someone as excellent as you. Tell them, I'm so lucky I got to sit next to now turn to the person on your other side who apparently is not so excellent because you didn't choose them, uh, but you got to build their, their confidence a little bit and say, you're, you're pretty excellent yourself. And I, I know there's some potential there, but you might have to work on it a little bit. <laughs> it says this in Isaiah 60, arise, shine, for your light has come. It's talking to you here today. Be encouraged. Those that are watching online, lean in a little bit. God's speaking to you today. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your light. On. I don't know about you, but that just encourages me today that there is such excellence in me that the Bible is saying that nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. I'm going to pray for this message today called Vivir Mi Vida Con Excelencia. Father, thank you for your presence today. Thank you for your goodness. I pray in Jesus' name that the power of the Holy Spirit would continue to move in this room. There are miracles that are needed right now that are beyond our help as people. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to move right now. Holy Spirit, move and restore people that have cancer, that have diseases and sickness in their body. Lord, for which there is no cure. You are the ultimate cure. You are the healer. With your stripes, we are healed. Lord, people that are dealing with addictive behaviors or violent behaviors or, or uh, dysfunctional relationships right now, be the peace that heals from the inside, God. Move on hearts today. Lord, open up hearts, Lord, to receive the hopeful power of the name of Jesus today and help me deliver this message in a way that honors you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. come on, church, everybody said. Amen. All right, so a couple of years ago, uh, we were on vacation, my family and I, we all were driving together and I started getting sick on, on the vacation. I, I had like, a, I just broke out in a fever, uh, probably six years ago. And um, I just felt terrible. So I just said, look, we got to stop. I got to I got to get in a motel room. I'm probably too sick to even be around anyone. So I'll get my own room. You guys can go do whatever you want to do. I just got to go to sleep. I, I just got to sleep this off. And so I remember going into this uh, motel. And when I went in there, it was we were just like somewhere in North Carolina. We did not like stop to find the best hotel or something. We just went wherever. And so when I walked in this place, uh, this lady was standing there working who was in the front office and um, I just stood there for a second and she never really looked up. You know, she, there was no one else there but, but her and she never really looked up from what she was doing. And so like finally I was there, I just kept looking and she looked up at me. She went like put her hands up like, like what do you want? I go, hi, uh, do you rent rooms here? And she said, well, it says motel outside, doesn't it? <laughs> and uh she goes, you know, how, how many? Uh, I said, uh, one. And she goes, rooms or people? I was like, uh, uh, both. Like, I, I'm one person. I just need one room. Like, like, can you help me? Like, has anyone ever experienced someone that just doesn't really care very much at all? Like, the excellence level is not very high. Uh, Ricky and I we're at a, a, a convention called NAM this past week in, in Los Angeles, and it's uh, for the music industry. And it's like every major music manufacturer in the world goes to NAM to show their, their gear. And so we were there for like three days getting to see all the new equipment that's going to be coming out. And it was amazing. But we went to this one uh, very well-known uh, company, 
And there was this incredibly beautiful guitar. We kept switching guitars, playing guitars. I was playing guitar, bass. He's a, he's a bass player. So I saw this one guitar that was so pretty. I picked it up. And the guy who was the rep was standing there. And I go, wow, this is so beautiful. These pickups, I've never seen this configuration before. What does it sound like? And he goes, it sounds like a guitar. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, thank you. That was definitely worth the ticket from Orlando to fly out to Los Angeles. No, I didn't say that. I was thinking that. Uh, but when we left, we, that was kind of our joke for the rest of the week. It sounds like a guitar. So there, there you go, another situation where you're just kind of dealing with someone that's just not really interested in, in excellence. Uh, and then I remembered another story where I was in Miami and a friend of mine called me and asked me to breakfast. He said, why don't you meet me at the hotel I'm staying at? I'm staying at the Ritz Carlton. And so I drove down the street and parked my car and walked up through the area where valet is. And I saw a guy that was just standing there helping. And I said, hey, excuse me, do you know where the restaurant is for breakfast? And he goes, oh, yes, I know exactly where it is. He goes, why don't you follow me? I'll take you there. And as we started walking, he goes, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have a problem because they've got waffles and then they've got pancakes. But they've got chicken and waffles, which is a little more if you like. Say, and I'm like, did I just meet the owner of this place? Like, what is happening right now? Who is this? Like, he's just a guy that worked in the valet who, like, left his area. And on the way there, by the time I, he's like, and the chef, his name is Enrique. He's going to take care of you. I'm like, what's happening right now? Like, like this guy had such a high level of excellence, a totally different experience. Isn't it interesting how God will use your excellence to elevate the atmosphere? And I think it's a phenomenal thing that we have the ability to elevate the atmosphere with excellence. We serve an excellent God. So therefore, we should reflect excellence in everything we do. And we're reflecting his nature. Psalm chapter 8, verse 1 in the King James says, Lord, O oh Lord. How excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. That word means noble. It means majestic. It means mighty. It is above other things. As a matter of fact, if you look up the word excellent in English and you look at the etymology of the word, it means ex, meaning out of, and celere, which means a tower. So it means above a tower. So it's something that's high, but it's even higher than that. So that means excellence is way up here. Raise your hand in, in the air if you want to live your life with excellence. Come on, raise your hand up in the air. If you want to live your life with excellence, we want to not just be high, but we want to be a, a higher than a tower when it comes to the quality of the kinds of things that we do in our life. But let me ask you a question. Why isn't everyone excellent? I want you to think about that answer for a few minutes. I'm going to come back to that. Why isn't everyone excellent? What stops us from being excellent? We'll talk about the answer in just a second. But I will say this, that every person of authority is looking for people with a spirit of excellence. If you want to move forward in life, if you want increased opportunities in your life, then just as a believer, make a decision right now. I'm going to do everything I can do to the best of my ability. I'm going to learn as much as I can learn. I'm going to work as hard as I can work. Um, it, it just has to be something that comes from within you, a standard that you set for yourself within you that you're going to do the very best you can to reflect God's nature in everything you do. And when you do that, you get opportunities to connect with people that appreciate it. Have you ever noticed that no one ever goes up to the person who misses the game-winning shot and puts a microphone in their face and says, what's your secret? It doesn't happen. No, it's, it's people that, that work hard. I like watching Steph Curry for Golden State. He, he, he's so amazing. It's, it's beyond comprehension the kinds of things that he does. You see him regularly make half-court shots. You'll see, see him, but it, does, it surprises us when we see him do it, but it doesn't surprise him. Why? Because he practices half-court shots. He actually stands at half-court in pregame and will shoot... 40, 50 shots and make 10 of them, 10 or 15 of them. So he's not surprised at doing something successfully that he has practiced over and over and over again. His pregame 
techniques that he does is absolutely unbelievable. The way he handles the ball is incredible. He shoots a shot from the tunnel before he leave, leaves and makes it all the time. So you're talking about someone who's not just gifted, someone that has a work ethic to push things forward. And he is the one that people stick the mic in his face and ask him what his secret is. Proverbs 18, 16 says, A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. You ever thought to yourself, man, I, I would love to be around great people. Well, let your gift speak for itself. Use your gift in the best way that God has given you. Make sure that you perfect your gift and you're doing the best with what you have that you possibly can. And I want to just settle something right now. Excellence, do not confuse excellence, is that it's an aptitude. An aptitude is something that we are naturally gifted with. Some people have a certain aptitude for a particular field. Like they just may be fast naturally. They've never run before. They've never uh, tried to run, but they're just faster than everyone else that they run with. Some people just are born and they can just sing really good when they're young. Some people, when they're little, they're just good at stuff. They're just really good at math. No one really taught them to be great at math. They just picked it up. They have a high aptitude when it comes to that particular area. So let's not get confused here. Excellence is not aptitude. Excellence is attitude. There's a difference. Excellence is having an attitude that the things that I have been given, I'm going to maximize. Is anyone here today? I, I don't know. The 930 service was fired up. They were given a lot of amens. You guys are kind of like in the chill mode, but I, you're at a four. But I believe let's, we're going to get to a nine by the end of this day. <laughs> We're going to get there. I think it's going to happen. So it's not aptitude. Uh, aptitude is God-given. It's a natural gift to, gifting, but excellence is an attitude. Do what you do well. Can I get an amen from someone? Do what you do well because your performance determines your platform. Your performance determines your platform. And God will never increase the size of your platform until you have filled the one he has already assigned you to. Until you have maximized what God has already given you, it would be harmful for him to increase the size of your platform until you have maximized the one that he has given you. So... We need to live that excellent life, the kind of excellent life where people are just baffled at how well we do things. People are just amazed. I can't believe that you can do that. I can't believe you do that so well. I can't believe you take that extra time to not just make it good and acceptable, but even better than I asked you to do it. You took it to that level. That's the kind of people we have to be. Did you know that the Queen of Sheba in the Bible, in 1 Kings, the Queen of Sheba, an unbelievably royal, uh, majestic queen from Africa, brings this huge group of people, this massive entourage, to see King Solomon. Why? Because it was known in, throughout the world that he was the wisest man that had ever lived. So she wanted to see it for herself. So she brings this massive entourage to see King Solomon. And in 1 Kings verses 10, verse 10 verse, excuse me, chapter 10, verse 3, it says, Solomon answered all of her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. Nothing. Like she said, like, why are there love bugs? And he was like, he gave her the answer. He, he knew every single answer. He just had an answer for everything. He knew that answer. And it's, ama it's amazing that, that no matter what she threw at him, and she was a wise person herself, but he was able to, to deal with the answer. She was blown away, the Bible says, with his team. She was blown away with his culture. She was blown away with how people served that were under him. She was blown away even by how they dressed, the Bible tells us. She asked him the hardest question she could think of. He answered every one of them, listen so closely. She cared what he had to say because of how he lived his life. Have you ever thought about that? That people will eventually care about what you say when they see how you live? That's why it's so important. That we live lives that are just brimming with excellence in everything we do. I just had a, a story that came to me in the last service. It's not really in my notes, but I was just thinking there's this new place. Okay, uh, 
okay, there's this new place. Uh, el nombre uh, es Crumble. <laughs> es mi favorito. Uh, how do you say snack? What is it? Merienda. Merienda? Merienda. Okay, that. Okay, es mi favorite. <laughs> that. It's my favorite new snack, Crumble. And it's right down there on... Uh, on Osceola Parkway, so, so good. It's cookies. Oh, they're so good. They're just great cookies. So one day, I'm in Crumble, get some cookies, and uh, I'm, I buy my cookies. I'm waiting on them to be made, and they put, like, icing and all kind of stuff on them, so they're, they're, they're being made. And this lady walks in the store, and she's a little bit older and, and you know, not, not super, like, social-looking, kind of to herself, and looks kind of quiet and stuff like that. And she ordered her cookies and seemed a little shy. And uh, when she was going to ring them up, I handed the lady my credit card that was behind the thing. And the lady goes, what, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm just going to buy your cookies. I said, I, I, she goes, what? I said, yeah, I'm just going to buy your cookies. I said, this place is so good. And it just kind of one of them days where I just, I kind of want somebody to buy me cookies someday. So I'm just going to sow this seed right here of cookie buying <laughs> Uh, into Osceola County, and then maybe I'll get this back someday. She's like, I don't even understand what's happening right now. She's like, no one has ever done something like She's like, why would you do that? I said, well, I just thought it might, it might be fun to just have something like that happen, just a little blessing. I said, I pastor a church down there called City of Life. If you ever like to see me again? I said, that's where I preach there on Sundays. And she just like was like super emotional. And um, I thought it was pretty sweet. And I got back in my car and was driving down the road. I had tears in my eyes. I was thinking that something meant so much to her that was just probably like eight dollars or something made, made a massive difference and made her feel special and valued which is important but here's the part that i was going to tell you that i thought was so cool is i went back to crumble i go there a lot okay i went back to crumble <laughs> many months later <laughs> many months later i go back to crumble and there's a girl that was in there and she goes you she was you're that guy that bought that lady those cookies she said, I just wanted to tell you something. She goes, and there was like no one really around. She's like, I saw that that day and like the, the impact that it made on her. She goes, that is, was a very sweet thing that you did. She goes, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that since I've been working here. So here's my question to you. Is she more likely, the lady that saw that or the lady that it happened to, is she more likely to care about what I say because of how I live my life? Do you think she might just be a little more open to listen if I have some information maybe about who Jesus is to me, what he's done for my life, how he's helped me in my tough times? Do you think she might be a little more open? That's why excellence in every area of our life is important because it sets a standard and it says to people, this person is real and they have something about them that I want to listen to what they're saying. So let's let excellence guide us in every possible area of our life. That's exactly what uh, happened with Solomon and he became famous for it. Then we see another story of Daniel, who's actually a slave in Babylon. He ha is a slave. He is a Hebrew slave that has lost his culture. He's had everything stripped away from him and now he works for the bad guy. And it says here that the king put him through a series of tests and his excellence every time took him to the top. I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter if you've got a bad job. It doesn't matter if you've got no money in your bank account. It doesn't matter if you're in a terrible situation. If you've got a spirit of excellence in your, in your life, God is always going to elevate you to the top. It doesn't matter what's been taken away from you. Eventually, here's what happens to Daniel. It says, King Darius reorganized his kingdom. He appointed 120 governors to administer all the parts of his realm. Over them were three vice regents, one of whom was Daniel. The governors reported to the vice regents who made sure that everything was in order for the king. But Daniel, brimming with spirit and intelligence, so completely outclassed the other vice regents and governors that the king decided to put him in charge of the whole kingdom. That's what happens right there. Look at someone next to you say, I think you could outclass some people today. Tell somebody, I think you could outclass some people today. That's what happened, man. If you got that classy spirit... Well, God will just take you to the top every single time. Joseph, I love the story of Joseph. Joseph was always excellent in everything he did. Uh, it, you know, I mean, you think about his story telling his brothers. Sometimes the problem is you might tell your dream to the wrong people. He tells his brothers, like, man, I had this awesome dream last night. You guys were worshiping me. You might want to keep that one to yourself because they threw him in a hole. They threw him in a hole and like it, it kind of messed up his future for a while. So he's, he's, he's becomes a slave. 
He becomes uh, you know, someone that's working in the house of a guy named Potiphar. Potiphar's got this wife who's like a total cougar that's into him and she comes after him and like she wants to have sex with him and like to the degree of like she puts her hands on him and like gets a hold of his crow. He's like, whoa, he like, I don't know if he's like just got out of the shower or something. The Bible says he ran naked. He didn't have nothing on underneath and it is she hold, she's holding on to the thing and, and like he runs away and then she goes to her husband and lies about him and says that he tried to make an advance on her. So he gets thrown in jail. Now this excellent man who's always done excellent things in every position he's been in is now in prison for something he did not do. But you know what? You can't keep a good man down. Genesis chapter 23, 39 verse 23 says the warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care. God elevated Joseph to the highest place in the prison. It says because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. So he gets to the point in the prison where God has elevated him to the highest point that he can be at in the prison right under the warden. So there comes a time where these two guys that work for Pharaoh, the, the baker and the cupbearer, get out of Pharaoh's favor and he sends them to jail. And so they get in the prison put under Joseph because he's at the highest place. And one day they wake up and both of them are very sad. And Joseph's like, what's wrong with you guys? They're like, man, both of us had these really freaky dreams last night. And we cannot figure out what they mean. They mean something, but we can't interpret them. And Joseph has that excellent spirit. He's like, I tell you what, I don't know, but my God does. And you tell me what that dream is, he'll interpret it. So they give him the dream. So first of all, the cupbearer gives the dream to Joseph and, and it's got the number three in it and some weird imagery. And Joseph said, hey, don't worry. God gave me the, the interpretation. The three means three days. And all the other imagery that you told me about means that within three days, Pharaoh's going to restore you to your position. He's like, oh, snap. He's like, but remember, when you get back to Pharaoh and you get restored and this dream actually comes true, just like the way I said it would, remember me when you get there. Don't just leave me rotting in this prison. Okay, so... There's kind of a funny side part to the story is, is the baker. And I'm not sure how bad of a baker he had to be get to thrown in jail. But uh, he must have been a pretty bad baker. But he, he comes up to Joseph after he hears the cupbearer's you know, interpretation. He's like, what's up, man? You interpreted my boy's dream. How about you interpret my dream, too? And Joseph's like, okay, cool. I don't know, but God does. Tell me your dream. He tells him the dream. He's like, yeah, you're going to get like impaled in three days and die. He's like, oh, no. So that that's, didn't work out so well for the baker. Uh, but anyways, the cupbearer. Goes back to Pharaoh, gets restored, but he forgets Joseph. For two years, he forgets Joseph. And two years later, Pharaoh has a dream. And Pharaoh can't interpret it. And the cupbearer hears Pharaoh say this. He goes, oh my gosh, that dude from jail. When I was in prison, there's, that's the, it's that Hebrew dude. He knew he'll be able to interpret. So he tells Pharaoh, he goes, I feel terrible right now. He goes, but this guy, when I was in jail, I had this weird dream. He interpreted it. We got to get him. He said, what's his name? Go get him. So he goes and gets him, brings Joseph. Pharaoh says, I had a dream. He said, he said I don't know, but God knows. Tell me. He's going to interpret it. So he tells him the dream. And, and, and Joseph says, what your dream means is that there are going to be seven years of prosperity in Egypt. But it's going to be followed by seven years of famine. So what you need to do is during the good years, you need to be saving stuff. Take 20% of all the surplus and put it in a storehouse so that during the seven years of famine, you'll be able to manage everything well. And really what you need to do is you need to get a very wise person that's able to understand all these, these things. I like how he put in a plug for himself. You know what I'm saying? He's like, you need a really wise person that understands these principles. And, and he's like, listen, listen to what Pharaoh said. This is dope right here. Uh, Genesis 41, he says, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace and all my people will submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. It means that Joseph went from being a prisoner to the second highest prestigious place of power in the greatest city in the world. The most powerful city in the world. He went from being a prisoner to second highest in command in one day. He was excellent at home. He was excellent at Potiphar's house. He was excellent in the prison. And he was excellent in the palace. I got news for you today, man. If you're not excellent where you are right now, you will never be excellent anywhere else. You need to stop having the attitude that you need to wait for something to happen till your excellence kicks in. No, if you're not being good where you are right now, it's just a pipe dream that someday it's going to start. 
You better practice well right now because people that practice well play well. That's a, that's a principle. You don't need the best of everything in your life to be excellent. You know, vivir su vida con excelencia. Amen. Live your life with excellence. Work with what you've got. You know, when I was growing up, it's hard to believe that in my lifetime and in my dad's lifetime, my dad was born in 1947, right after World War II. His father was a sharecropper. A sharecropper is similar to, well, I'll just tell you what it is. It's someone who has absolutely nothing. And the only way they make their living is by the money they make. They split with the owner of the property in order to live there. They have nothing. That's, that's what my papa was. Back in the day. And when I grew up and my parents were trying to make their way, there's really no other way to say it other than that. We, we weren't in poverty, but we were poor just financially, just did not have money. We had places that mom and dad had to live at times that were roach infested. That we, we had places where it was so cold where my dad had to take a hairdryer at nighttime up in Kansas and blow the hairdryer over my family to keep us warm. Uh, that's, the kind, that's the kind of atmosphere we were in fighting against all these things to live out the dream that God had put in their heart. I'm going to tell you something. We were poor, but we were classy. And I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but you can be you, you, class ain't got nothing to do with how much money is in your bank account. Class is something that you have. It's a spirit of excellence. See, we weren't we weren't rich and didn't have a lot of money, but we were always clean and we looked good. Okay. We didn't have the best brands, but we wore them well. We either unbuttoned our shirt or tore off the sleeves or wore our shoes kind of swaggy. And I'll never forget this, man. When I used to go to this school, over, when we lived in Winter Garden, before we came to this church, I went to a school called Lakeview Junior High School. And I would have been the first freshman at Dr. Phillips. They were opening up Dr. Phillips the next year. And all the kids that went to this school, it was the school where everyone lived from Windermere. So it was like Bay Hill, all the, you know, Bay Lake Estates, all of these friends that I had were the kids of extremely wealthy people that were CEOs of Disney and big companies and like that, super preppy, all that kind of stuff. That was at the time where we didn't have much money. And I'll never forget this. I wanted an OP shirt so bad, Ocean Pacific. That's the name of this company, Ocean Pacific. We did not have enough money to buy it. So you know what my mom did? My my mom sewed an OP logo on a T-shirt, on a, on a T-shirt, and it looked absolutely perfect. And all these kids at my school were like really into fashion, all this stuff. And I'll never forget, I wore that shirt to one of the most popular guys in the whole school. He was older than I was. He, he had like all, the, all their clothes. He's like, where did you get that shirt? I said, it's custom. <laughs> Hey, it's called class, baby. You either got it or you don't. Class is a spirit. It's excellence. It's in you. It ain't got nothing to do with how much money you spend on your outfit. It's got to do with something that's on the inside of you that burns. There's a fire that's in you that God wants lit. And see, that, th those same amazing parents always got me the things that I needed. I'll never forget when, when I was, you know... Uh, after football practice, when I was 15 years old, my dad walks in my room with this gigantic box. And, and I said, what is that? I'm saying, I got my pads on. And he, I go, what is that? He goes, that's called a sequencer. He goes, our youth pastor just quit. He goes, you're the new youth pastor and you're going to learn how to program music into this and you're going to do it by Monday. And he shut the door and walked out. <laughs> Let's go. I didn't know nothing. I didn't, I, there wasn't no internet. There wasn't no YouTube. There wasn't anything. There was just this thing. So... I, it, within a year's time, I became an actual professional musician. I didn't just start programming music, but I learned in 1986 how not only to make beats, but I was selling cartridges to professional bands in Orlando that played in all the top 40 nightclubs. I was programming Prince, Michael Jackson, all these, I mean, later on, Jodeci, all these. I was creating sounds on my Insonic SQ80 with no other equipment other than that. I would do these songs and people that were professional producers would say, where did you get that drum sound? And I would say, I made it. 
He would say, no, there, there, there's no way. I know every sound. I'd say, you can, I'll show you the patch right now. I created it from scratch. I made it. People were blown away at the stuff I got out of that instrument that was not super expensive, but I wasn't going to let money prevent me from being able to have the best of the best. There's something in me that burned. I said, I'm going to take what I've got right here, and I'm going to make it great. You don't have to have the best of the best to start something. You take what you have right now. Come on, church, right now. Don't wait. You don't have to wait to have the best. Take what is in your hand right now. Come on, God has given you something. What's in your hand? Malcolm Gladwell talks about 10,000 hours. And it's pretty widely accepted now that it takes about 10,000 hours of devotion to a particular thing for you to become an expert in an area. It's a lot of time. I, I get it. That means five and a half hours for five years. It means every day, five and a half hours every day for five years, two hours and 45 minutes every day for 10 years, one hour and 22 minutes every day for 20 years to become an expert. You want to be an expert? This is the kind of work that it takes. I mean, I've told you guys this before. I play guitar. I've been playing since I was 13 years old. I hear all kinds of people. They'll hear me play something and say, I want to play guitar. You know what? I, I know it just sounds super mean, but you know what I always say? I say, no, you don't. You don't want to play guitar. You want to be able to magically play guitar. Uh, because I remember my fingers bleeding. I remember sitting down and listening to every song on the radio and playing it over and over and over again until I finally got it right or just couldn't do it. And I had to find a teacher to teach me how to do it. I didn't even know what a capo was. There were certain tunings that I would hear on the radio and I just would move my hands in a certain way. Like, how in the world do they make that chord? I don't even know how they made that chord. I didn't have anybody to ask. Uh, but see, you have to work and work and work to become an expert in a particular area. But you know what? We're not afraid of work. Why? Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Do you know what it says? Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. You know, Steve Jobs says, be a yardstick of quality. I love that. He says some people aren't used to an environment where excellence is expected. You have to be a yardstick of quality that when you do something and you lay something down on the table, something has been assigned to you. It's excellent every time. But nobody said great job. It has nothing to do with what people say. What it's got to do with is something that's in you that reflects an excellent God. And you let God. The, the Bible says promotion comes from the north. A man can't promote you. A man can't prevent you from being promoted. Because God is the one that does the promoting. He might use a man to do it. Or, or a, a man may refuse to see the gift on your life and he may try to hold you back. But what promotion comes from the north means is even if someone doesn't give you a promotion, God promotes you. God promotes you because he's the one that's doing the promoting based on your excellence. So we come back to that question in closing. I said, why isn't everyone excellent? And if you're saying, well, if everyone were excellent, there'd be no such thing as excellence because our current definition of excellence would be average. <laughs> Lord, if, that's, if you actually said that, you need to quit drinking coffee and drink some decaf or listen to a, a, a chill out song or something like that. The, 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 the answer is not that. Why isn't everyone excellence? There's something that stops us from excellence. I believe it's something called resistance. When we try to do great things, something always tries to hold us back. Did you know that Hitler, Adolf Hitler, wanted to be a painter? That he took his inheritance 700 Kronen and moved to Vienna to study at the Academy of Fine Arts. Adolf Hitler, that was his passion to be a painter. Have you ever seen a painting by Adolf Hitler? I haven't either. 
So what that tells me is it was easier for Adolf Hitler to start World War II than it was for him to stare at a blank canvas. Resistance, that thing in us that tells us it's too hard, it's too get difficult, it prevents us from greatness. We have all kinds of resistance. We have internal resistance, external resistance, and spiritual resistance. Internal resistance says things like, I'm not good enough, I'm too tired, I'm too bored, I don't have enough energy, I'm not focused, I'd rather watch Netflix. External resistance says things like, this is too hard, it takes too much practice, it takes too much money, I don't have nice enough stuff, it requires skill sets I don't possess. You have people sometimes that are, don't like your idea, people that challenge you or try to prevent you or block you, that's external. You have spiritual resistance, voices from the spirit that say you're not free. Evil voices that say you don't deserve God's love. You're a prisoner of your own desires. If God really loved you, he wouldn't let you suffer. All these things that look like resistance. You know, we have a saying in my family and my kids just say it. I just make them say it out loud. Want to know what it is? Here's the saying. We do hard things. That's what my family says. We do hard things. Because the answer is always, this is hard. So, so would you say this with me real quick? Say, we do hard things. Look at someone next to you and say, we do hard things. It's very hard to do great things. It is, there is no easy pathway to greatness. It does not exist. That's why Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, work hardly as unto the Lord. Stand up and stand out today. Make a decision in your life that you are going to live your life with excellence in everything you do. Arise, shine, like Isaiah 60 says, for your light has come. You don't need to wait on anything, it's today. Today is the day for you to step out and to stop settling for average in your life. And like the word excellence itself, it's a high tower. It's even higher than a high tower. That's the life that you're called to live today. You can do it today. Stop settling for average and also stop letting perfectionism. Don't confuse excellence with perfectionism. Perfectionism will never put out anything until it's perfect. Well, then you'll never put out anything. You have to learn to do the best you can do and then release it and let it go. Why? So you can move on and grow. Sometimes you need to do your best excellent work that's at the highest level of your capacity to get it out there so other people can show you what's wrong with it. Then you learn and you're able to grow. But if you always, let me tell you something, people that wait for the perfect opportunity in life and never do anything until everything is right, you know what they do? They blow it. They blow the opportunity because they haven't learned how to deal with failure. And failure is a part of that process in our life. So don't let perfectionism steal your ability to be excellent in all you do. I'll just close with that scripture, Isaiah 60, when it says, See, darkness covers the earth, thick darkness is over all the peoples. But the Lord rises on you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Voy a vivir mi vida con excelencia. I'm going to live my life with excellence. Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody give God a praise today. Amen. If you're watching online, this next moment right here, I think is very important for many people that are watching. I know definitely for many people that are in the room. This is the moment in the message where I love to make an appeal that if your life is not right with Jesus, if your heart is not right with God right now in this room, I can't stress the significance and importance of making sure your life is right now. You know, I've, I've told you before, things that have happened here were people that sat in this room, drove out a guy one time at a blink, came to this service, left this place and got killed within 15 minutes of leaving here. The ambulance had, had to come here to go down there to the scene of where it happened. I'm sitting there preaching at Blink about you never know. Blink, the whole meaning of the word Blink is it can all change in a blink. I, when you have an opportunity to be in a place 
that has hope and healing and redemption. I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm just trying to say that our lives are so brief. We have an opportunity to know Jesus today. Don't wait for all these things to fall. Well, I want to wait until my friend's here. No, just, just, just tell them about it. Tell them about what God did. My family's not here. We, we, just don't miss the moment here today. The Holy Spirit is here today. Those that are watching online, this is the moment to get your life right with God. He loves you and He cares for you. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus or your life is not right with God, I'm just going to count to three. And the reason I'm going to do that is I just think it's a kind of call to action here. We make decisions on all kinds of things. But how about something that's really important? When are you going to take a moment, be faced with a decision? Am I going to live for God or not? Am I going to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit or not? That's what the Lord's asking you today. Am I going to accept Jesus into my life and ask Him to save me or not? I hope the answer is yes today. And if you feel it's yes in your heart, that's not a decision you can make. The Bible tells us that we don't even have the ability to reach out for God. It's only Him that can give us that faith to begin with. So that's evidence that He's moving in your life. The fact that you believe you need a Savior is evidence that He's moving in your life. So when I count to three, I'm going to ask you to put your hand straight up in the air. Those that are watching online, I'll ask you to lift your hand or to type in that chat. I'm raising my hand right now. I need Jesus in my life. I believe lives are going to be changed. Here we go. One, the Bible says now is the time of salvation. Two, I believe people that are here today have been drawn here by the power of the Holy Spirit to experience what is about to happen, a life change in this room. Three, hands up in the room, all over the building. Everybody, hands going up in every single section, all over this building, everywhere. I believe people are lifting their hands online. Please type that in the chat. I need Jesus in my life. Thank you, Lord. Would you, those with your hands in the air, would you pray this prayer out loud? Actually, everyone, let's pray it together. Say, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of my sins. I can't save myself. Thank you so much for loving me for caring for me, for dying for my sins, for empowering me with the Holy Spirit, giving me victory that I can live a life of excellence like you, Lord. Walk with me, be with me through the good times and the bad. I'll serve you, I'll follow you, I'll get connected to the things of God to find my destiny. I can't wait for that to begin. In Jesus' name. Amen. Could we give God a great praise this Sunday morning? We love you so much. Very excited to see you next week as we continue our summer playlist series. This concludes the teaching. If you'd like to support what God is doing here at City of Life, click on the Give button at www.col.tv or text a dollar amount to the number 855-997-6900. We hope you'll join us again.